the black church has failed, failed the black, the black community. community. A lot of these black pastors, I'll say 90, 97% of them ain't right. And that's why the black community is such in such a terrible state. And I'm talking about the big time pastors on down. They ain't teaching you right and they don't care about you. And they, they are still doing what the enslaver oppressors want them to do. Just lullaby you to sleep and tell you to wait till you get to heaven for your justice. Nah, you supposed to be fighting for your justice now. now. The God I serve, he ain't no coward. Jesus wasn't a coward. Oh, we, we're just going to wait. We're going to wait. You better get up off your butt and stand and fight and stop letting this world do whatever. This government and these these evil sectors do whatever they want to you. And you don't say anything. But then you'll go and you'll go and um, try to check these um, these um, entertainers. You'll go and attack Beyonce. And you'll go and attack these other entertainers. But you don't say nothing to these wicked politicians and government officials and evil schools. Welcome back, everyone. Um, thank you for joining me. I was about to slip and say thank you for joining me tonight like I'm on some kind of live pop podcast. Um, I might be considering that. Yeah, I know I'll be doing it. I don't know when I'll, I'll start a podcast, but I believe you have more freedom to talk the way you really want to talk on a podcast. So, But right now, I'm on YouTube, so... Um, I'm coming to you. Yes, you saw the thumbnail, Black Churches. I got a lot to say about Black Churches. And I'm going to try to contain myself. Because I have a lot of... Is it, Can I say disdain towards Black Churches? And it's not with you... It's not what you think. It's not like... Um, I have oh I'm just so angry and I'm so hurt because of what no I'm disturbed it's disturbing to see the state of the black churches and they've been this way forever the black the black church to me is nothing but a paid babysitter especially if they have the um, nonprofit 5013 5013c they're paid um, babysitters. And you know they're not going to mess up their money telling you the truth. These black churches and these black pastors are not going to mess up their money. Man, woman, or child. They're not going to mess up their money telling you the truth. This is what God revealed to me several years ago in 2014. He's been getting me ready to talk. The, 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 the things that I have learned from God and Holy Spirit since 2000 no 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 actually 1992 he's been sitting me having me back to sit back being taught by him by Holy Spirit and these are things that I the things that I'm bringing to YouTube I discuss in private with family members and those that you know I can talk to we can have a nice intellectual god jesus christ discussion and an intellectual discussion about current events that's happening around the world you can't talk to everybody you know about certain things it's just it's just not there this was revealed to me in november 2014 god revealed to me that pastors are cursing their church house and household and this is how they're doing it he said obedience is better than sacrifice that's what his word says when people who are not in right standing with god go to church and give offerings whatever they are filled with is on that money so if a dope dealer come in there bringing you money bringing money into the church uh, a witch what have you whatever is in that person however they got that money is on that money 
that's why it's imperative that true God-fearing pastors pass up the plates when they are instructed by Holy Spirit to do so. That means stop taking everybody's money. But that's too much like God, right? When their heart is not in line with God, they receive money which is given to them with the wrong heart and mindset and whatever curses are attached to that money, the pastor willing, re willingly receives it and it goes not only into his life, but the church's life and his parishion parishioner's life. When they are in right standing with God, his ble God's blessings and protection is over that pastor, over the entire church and over his household and his, paris his parishioners. So that's why you have some of some of these churches that are so messed up. Remember, I I watched what's that black black mafia the the show on stars, and <laughs> they were showing how, you know, what, what what's the pastor Snoop plays. That's exactly how I see pastors in America, just like him. I believe the real true God fearing pastors they're not out and about all over the place. You know, he has, God has a special protection around them. So, you don't, you know, you don't hear about their churches. They're not on social media. I believe they're hidden. And it's for a reason. And at the right time, they will be revealed. Those churches will be revealed. Because when it's time, these fake, phony, fake churches and fake pastors will be exposed. And then the, the, the ones who really, the, the parishioners and sheep who really want to know about God and, and really want their lives to line up with God, they're going to have to have a house to go to, a church house to go to, because they're not going to continue to be able to go to that fake, phony church they've been going to. Let's go to John 21, verse 15 through 19. What did Jesus say to Peter? He said to Peter three times, feed my sheep. Verse 15, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. He said to him again, second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, tend to my sheep. Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. By this time, if it, if, if it was like 2003, somebody would be like, Jesus, what's up? Why you keep... You didn't ask me three times. I mean, all due respect, Jesus. Why do you keep asking me this? Jesus said the third time, feed my sheep. I, that stuck out to me when I first read that um, years ago. Because when, when I came back to Christ, um, when I really completely turned away from the world and I gave my life completely to Jesus Christ, and I was just thirsty for the word I mean it was like a cup of water like imagine being thirsty and it's the thirst that no soda or juice can quench it's like you have to have water that's how I felt when I came back to Christ I was so thirsty for his word I was in God's word all day all night and it felt like I couldn't get enough and then everything that I had read previously previously to giving my life to Christ uh, when I read it after giving him my life again, I, it was just rhema. It was just a new. It was like I was reading these things like I had never read them before. And I, when I read that part, I said, Jesus said that to Peter three times. And the reason why he said that to him three times is because he knew what was going to happen. That a lot of these people were going to go to the church pretending to be pastors, pretending to be ministers, and they're not. Some are going to go up there with the best intentions and then they're going to be turned out. Some are going to go up there as wolves in sheep clothing. They're not there for God at all. They're actually in there to bring confusion to the body of Christ. 
And some is just straight a bit, it's just a straight business. But no matter what reason you go up there, if you're trying, if you're coming, pretending like you are a pastor, you're required to feed. You put yourself in that position, you better do right by God's sheep. You better do right by them. Or it'd be better if, if you if you're just going there for money, you you be better off leaving the church and just going and, and doing what you want to do for money than to be in this role pretending and and deceiving people. And there are people really going to church trying to find help, trying to find God, and you're not helping them. I blame the black church. For the state that the black community is in and here's the reason why because the black church is still teaching black people like slave black slave pastors um this is what was in the i did recently did some videos on um harriet jacob the incident in the life of the slave girl her book there's a section in there where she talks about the uh, resurrection of Nathan, uh, Nathan Nat Turner. Um, they really, they were like, Phew. the the enslavers were really hardcore pressed on um, overseeing what black pastors taught the slaves. They was hard pressed on it. They were like, uh uh. You, 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 you better make sure, niggers, that you teach them this. After the alarm caused by Nat Turner's insurrection had subsided, the slaveholders came to a conclusion that it would be well to give the slaves enough of religious instruction to keep them from murdering their masters. Listen to the sermon that this um, slave preacher preached to them. Servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh and fear and trembling trembling in singleness of heart in singleness of your heart as unto Christ Hearken ye servants give strict heed unto my words you are rebellious sinners your hearts are filled with all manner of evil this the devil who tempts you god is angry with you and will surely punish you if you don't forsake your wicked ways you live you that live in town are i servants behind your master's back instead of serving your masters faithfully which is pleasing in the sight of your heavenly master you are idle and shrink your work god sees you you tell lies god hears you instead of being engaged in worshiping him you are hidden away somewhere feasting on your master's substance tossing coffee grounds with some wicked fortune teller or cutting cards with another old hag your masters may not find you out but god sees you and will punish you god sees you you men still away to every gorge shop to sell your master's corn that you may buy rum to drink god sees you you sneak into the back streets or among the bushes to pitch coppers although your masters may not cut you out god sees you and will punish you this sermon was just filled with condemnation and 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 calling them sinners and calling them wicked and and oppression the sermon was nothing but oppression and instead of them the pastor or minister um, encouraging them to be obedient to god they were basically forcing them to be obedient to these men to be subservient, obedient, and God is watching you, and He's gonna be, He's watching to see if you're if you're um, not gonna be obedient to this man, or if you're not gonna be uh, subservient and obey your master. Just kept drumming is obey and then he said obey your old master and your young master and your old mistress and your young mistress if you disobey your earthly master you offend your heavenly father he just kept kept pressing this into the slaves and this is what they still do today it's not about obeying god it's about obeying man 
if you if you're not being told to obey it's either obey your boss your employer obey the pastor obey the pastor obey police obey the government and you might hear a little bit about obeying god your pastor has been lullabying you to sleep with obeying everything and everybody except god you know god is a um instructs his people to stand up and fight he does not call his people to be cowards he doesn't call his people to and then you know the scripture everybody want to say you know turn the other cheek you're only supposed to turn the other cheek when it's concerning your sister or brother in the lord but a worldly person a person that ain't got nothing to do with the god you say you serve you ain't supposed to turn up the cheek and i'm not saying go duke it out and put somebody molly wop somebody i'm saying no you're not gonna do this to me i'm you're not my brother in christ i don't have to overlook you now there are times god will tell you to let some things go and then there's some times he'll tell you to fight them and fight them mean Whatever way he tells you to fight. And I'm not, when I say fight, I don't mean physical fighting. Because God said our fight, our fight is not real flesh and blood. I mean, if he tell you to take somebody to court, you take them to court. Now, he tell you not to sue, don't you sue your sister and brother in Christ. But you take that wicked landlord to court. You take your wicked boss to court. You take your wicked co-worker to court. You have a right to stand up and fight for your rights. Where is your church telling you to stand up and fight for your rights? Oh, well, um, you know, just pray for him, child. And, and just, just let God take care. You know how many times I heard that? Just let God take care of it. Yeah, there are times you're supposed to let God take care of things. And then there are times that he gave you the boldness and the strength and the knowledge and the courage to go. And you stand up. Have you ever stopped going to a church and seemed like your life got better? I experienced it. I went to a church for over 14 years and I'm not going to put that church in. I'm not going to put the name out there. Not at, not yet. Not right now. I went to a church for over 14 years from the time I was like 13. And... I guess I was like 27, 28 when I left. And do you not know, do you know that the, when I left that church, that's when blessings started coming into my life and my family's life. But all the while I was at that church, I felt like a peasant. That's witchcraft. Do you know how many pastors are in a pulpit literally doing witchcraft against their parishioners to control them? Why are you giving your last dime to this church? God didn't tell you to. It's an individual thing. If you got $20 and, and you're going to a bona fide God fearing church and you know that pastor is on fire for God, you know them dink is, them those, that dinking is on fire for God, you know they're not in, in, you know, living one way in the church and then in the streets they doing something else, you know these are bona fide God fearing men and women of God, then yeah, you plant your seed in that church. But when, if you're going to a church and you know it's messy, it's more messier than, 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 than the club on Friday and Saturday night, you don't give your money to that church. Matter of fact, you need to leave. That's why you're not being blessed. That's why you, you give 10% of your um, tie to these churches, your 10% of your income to these churches, and you don't get anything back in return. But every time you look around, that pastor got a new, a new uh, vehicle. And so did his wife and his kids. And you barely have food on your table. You're barely, barely able to pay the rent. Because you're planting seeds into dead ground. And then when you give to when you when you're giving your money to these pastors who are down low, some of them down low witches, they're cursing you. You're giving money and you're being cursed. Don't think it's um a far fetched, honey. A lot of these pastors, and I'm speaking specifically to black about black pastors. I'm not talking about any other pastors. I'm talking about people who look like me. A lot of these pastors are have two lives. 
I saw a book cover when I was doing research on this. And honestly, um, surprisingly, <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. It's not a lot you can find talking where people are talking about pastors who are so-called pastors um, in the pulpit and then behind closed doors, they're serving the devil. I couldn't find too much. I saw a lot of books, but just open, like free information online. I couldn't really find it. I wasn't surprised. There's too many of them. A lot of these people, a lot of these pastors who are in the pulpit, they are not there appointed by God. I personally believe that when a pastor is appointed by God, you're going to see a difference in that ministry. You're going to see life. You're going to see people healed mentally, spiritually, financially, physically. You're not going to see a lot of um, just flesh, like gossiping, the Jezebel spirit, jealousy, envy, strife, lust. You're not going to see all that because first of all, that pastor, um, when you, when you really led by God and Holy Spirit, God, Holy Spirit is all knowing. Holy Spirit is going to be telling that pastor what's going on. And that, if that pastor is a God fearing man, he's going to come out and expose it. And he's going to get rid of who he needs to get rid of, who God tells him to get rid of. And then there's some people that's out that's in church, not doing good. I mean, not doing right. They ain't close to doing right. But then God will see that person's heart and he might tell that pastor not to push him out. It's God's going to take care of him. He's going to change his heart. But there are some vile, wicked people in these churches under these pastors that's a sign to really destroy that church. And if that pastor is not truly operating in um, true reverence and fear of God, that's why that church is going to hell in a handbasket. I was re I don't know if you read um heard of a book called The Divine Revelation of Hell. I read that book in the early 90s. It got me right real quick. I was slipping as I was trying to slip and slide after I gave my life back to Christ. And I'm not going into details about my life, not of not as of yet. But um you know, I was one of those people that thought that, you know, as long as you, you could do what you wanted to do, as long as you, at the end of the day, say, God, forgive me, please. And then go back out there and do it. I really thought that you can do that. <laughs> Until I read that book. That book, ooh, you talking about scared straight? Scared straight? It was a God fear. It was a, ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Like, mm, okay, I got it. I understand. I would like to share this part of the book where a pastor died in his sins and what took place. This pastor was seduced by riches. Listen to this. This this woman was the was was taken to hell. And God, Jesus told her to come back and express what she saw. He wants people to know that hell is not a joke please he hell was not created for man it was created for the devil hell rep is representative of god's anger and wrath so it wasn't for us this is what she saw we seem to be in the air above this object and as i look my friends it was in the shape of a coffin this may sound horrible to you and unbelievable but this is true this is what I saw. I saw small dark figures marching around a type of coffin and it seemed as if the top had rolled back and there inside was the same type of skeleton form I seen all through hell. My brothers and sisters, these demon spirits were tormenting this soul within this coffin. It was the soul of a man and the screams and the cries of this soul echo through hell, no hope, no love. This soul had lost all feeling of ever being helped. There was such a cry of hopelessness coming from the soul. I heard a cry of despair and sorrow fill the air as he screamed for mercy and for help. This soul had abandoned all hope. Oh my Lord Jesus, can you not let him out? So pitiful were the cries of this soul. Jesus said, peace be still my child. The man saw the Lord and he began to cry out to the Lord Jesus for mercy. He said, my Lord, my Lord, let me out. Let me out. Have mercy on my soul. 
I have been here for such a long time. Jesus said unto me, This soul, my child, was a preacher of my word. He used to serve me with all his heart, and he led many unto salvation. Some are still serving me today. With sadness, Jesus spoke these words. My word means what it says. Be ye holy, for I am holy. My word says, keep my commandments and love thy brethren. The lust of the flesh, my daughter, the deceitfulness of riches led him astray. He let Satan rule him in the end. Instead of my spirit, my daughter, he had a wonderful big church, a fine car, a very large income. He began to steal from the church offerings and began to teach lies, and he knew better. Oh, my Lord, I felt sorrow and compassion for the soul, for I could hear the cries of this man so pitifully as Jesus spoke. My child, Jesus said, he spoke part lies and part truth. He would not let me correct him. I sent many to him to tell him to repent and preach the truth again, but he would not. He knew the true gospel of Jesus Christ, but he loved the pleasures of this life more than the life of God and the praises of man. He knew not to teach or preach any other doctrine except the truth. He caused many to stumble and fall in the end. He once knew holiness. He knew not to sin. He said the Holy Ghost was a lie in the end. He said you could be a drunkard and get to heaven even if you did not repent. Much sin entered into him, my child, and he would not repent. He said God would not send you to hell. God was too good for that. He caused many to fall from the word of the Lord. He said, you did not need me, for he was as God. He also said he wanted to open seminars for this kind of teaching. My holy word was trampled under his feet, yet I loved him still. My child, remember this soul, knew many my ways, my power, my anointing, and my love was upon him, but he chose the world instead of me. It is better to have never known me than to know me and turn back from the Lord. If only he had listened to me, if only he had cared about his soul and others. He did not listen to me when I called. He would not hear. He had eyes to see and ears to hear, but he would not hear. He would not see. He loved the easy life. He listened to the voice of Satan instead of me. One day he was killed and came here. Satan torments so more that have preached my word. This is his torment, my child. And, uh, and horror. I watched the demons march around this coffin. Oh, my people, he seemed to have a real heart and blood was running from it. And it was up on his hands. Jesus said the blood of many are upon his hands. Jesus said he knew the truth, yet he would not obey the truth. Too late, too late, with sorrow of heart, we walked away hearing the cries of his soul echo through hell. Oh, Lord, how awful I cried. I felt so very sick inside. Satan is the deceiver of many. What you're about to see will help many to resist the devil. What I am telling you on these tapes will help many of you to understand the works of Satan. Oh, my Lord, how awful, how awful to be lost in hell forever. Here's the thing. There, this took place in this woman's life in the 70s. As I said, I didn't read the book until the early 90s, and it always stayed with me. And I'm going back to my point about these black churches. It's the fault of the black church, the state of the black community, because the black church and the black pastor is supposed to be God's beacon. It's supposed to be a beacon in this darkness that steer his people back to, that's supposed to steer the black church and the black pastors, but to steer God's people back to God, not having them turn away. For whatever reason, you don't want to, the, 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 you're not, for one, the black church isn't teaching black Americans who they are, who they truly are, the true Hebrews. They're not teaching them to stand, to stand and trust God when it looked like all hope is gone. Trust God. They're not teaching them how to fight. Yeah, you do pray. You do stand and you pray, but you also, you go out there and you fight 
against this wickedness and darkness that's coming to try to consume you. You got your children in these public schools that are dedicated to the devil. And then you sit up here and what's so baffling to me is you see the state of the school, especially when they came against praying in school in the 60s. That witch, that was a witch who came against praying in schools in the 60s. Look what has replaced prayer all kind of wicked and vile things under the sun has replaced prayer in school i don't see y'all out there petitioning taking these schools to court like that witch took these schools to court and demanded that prayer be taken out of school why y'all churches and so-called christians ain't going against these wicked public school systems why you sitting here still put you claim to be a christian and you still sending your child to these churches to to these um these schools to be confused and indoctrinated into perversions. Why y'all not going to go fight these school systems like that witch fault? Against prayer. You so bent out and so hateful towards the word of God. You would sit here and turn your back on what's happening in this public school system. And you have every right to demand that they stop. One way you demand that they stop is sue them. And if they still don't listen, you snatch your child up out of that school. You have every right to say, I don't want my child going to the school because I don't even teach my children what you're trying to fill my child up with. And ever since my child has been going to the school and you've been indoctrinating them into this perversion and rebellion, I've been having more problems with my child listening to me. That child came from your womb. That child came from your seed. Why are you letting these people teach your child this filth? It is the responsibility of the church to get its people in line with the word of God. According to a poll conducted by Pew Research in the United States, Christianity loses more people than it gains from religious conversions. It found that at 23% of Americans raised as Christians no longer identify themselves as Christians. That is absolutely terrible. And you know what? I, I completely understand because there was a point in my life where I didn't want to be a Christian. I didn't. And the reason why I didn't want to be a Christian is because I saw the state of the church. I saw how cold people were in the church. I saw how cold pastors were. They were respecters of persons, meaning if you, you know, we are a doctor, you are a lawyer, you got respect. You got treated with the utmost respect. But if you weren't, you was treated, you know, you was treated like scum, really. Respect our persons in the church. The pastor, you know, honored you according to your title. I hated going to church in the 80s when, um, what's that show? The Cosby Show came out. So many people praised that show. I couldn't stand it. Let me tell you why because people in the church was treated according to the Cosby show he was a doctor she was a lawyer in the black church that didn't do nothing but cause more um, inner turmoil for people who didn't have professional parents I saw it I witnessed it I experienced it it was terrible that's why I can't stand the Cosby to this day I can't stand it I couldn't stand that show. And I see why I couldn't stand it. Because <laughs> it was fake. Hey, Bill Cosby's family wasn't even like that. The, the, the image that he portrayed to black America and the world, this country, it wasn't even true in his own personal life. And he had y'all walking around bougie with your nose up in the air. What does your education do for you, black folks? Why are you still in 2023 still looking like a slave? A mangy dog. They'll treat a mangy dog better than they teach you. Than they treat you. You got the nerves to put your head up and your nose up in the air because you got a funky education and degree. Your degree don't separate you any further from how they still see you. Educated or not. Now let's go back to these pastors. I want God to hold you up by your feet and whoop you. Whoop the rebellion 
and stubbornness and wickedness and coldness out of you pastors i'm not saying every single pastor is this way honestly i'm waiting to see a god-fearing pastor you'll get all the respect in the world for me but the ones that i've seen and interacted with they are a joke and they are a clown i had a conversation with the son of a pastor from the church that i went to for 14 years in southern california los angeles that's all i'm gonna say about that i had a discussion with him on social media and i asked him this one question he walked right into it didn't even realize it until it was late until it was too late i asked him i said do you believe that a church uh, a community should represent the church that's in that community he said why sure i said so that church is deemed to be successful prosperous church shouldn't the community around that church represent that church he said yes i said well why is it the community around your church poverish in despair hopelessness and crime written uh uh that's when he starts stuttering i'm like i thought so no, nah, you just said that that community is supposed to represent that church that's prosperous. Why is the community around your church forsaken? I said, why didn't I get, uh, why didn't I restart receiving the blessings of God until after I left your church? Yeah, I still got those, um, I saved those tweets. <laughs> And like I said, one day, it, I'm not even saying all the things that I want to say. I'm, I'm just slowly, God told me, let it out slowly, you know, like small doses. You need to start looking at your pastor. You need to start checking out and finding out. Test the spirit by the spirit. You have every right to test the spirit by the spirit. You have every right to find out if the, man, the, the pastor you're sitting under is a God-fearing, true God-fearing pastor. See, you have a right to know if that pastor truly worshiped the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. You have a true, you have a, a right to see if that pastor have a true reverential fear in his heart for God and not living 10, 15 different lives. You have a right to to know if your pastor is uh, practicing the dark arts as he's standing in that pulpit, you have a right to know all this. You have a right. But you don't just go do it. Don't go just, you know, all willy-nilly. You better, first of all, if you're going to find out about that pastor, you better first, you better have, make sure you're right standing with God. So when you do go question this pastor, pastor with witnesses, you won't get hurt. Because if you're not walking right with God and you go try to question someone who is dabbling in witchcraft, who isn't right, you opening up yourself to be attacked and prosper and that attack will prosper. But if they try to attack you and you're covered and you're obedient and you're, you're and God has given you the green light to go and talk to that pastor about him or her possibly not, you know, operating and not in, in the fullness of Jesus Christ and representing God, truly the true God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, um, they try to come for you. They are not going to be able to touch you. And I know this for a fact. I was going to, this is one more thing I'm going to share. Um, before I completely gave my life back over to Christ, I was, <clears throat> was going to the ch to church I've been to for 14 years. I was going to talk to this uh, assistant pastor who was new at the church. And I just, it was something about the way they taught I had never heard before. And it was drawing me. Uh, prior to that, I didn't want to go to church. I told you I didn't want to be a Christian. I was living like the world and I didn't want to have nothing to do with the church. Because <clears throat> there was just too many fake, um, hardcore, mean, cold people in the body of Christ. And I didn't want to, from what I witnessed, I didn't want to have nothing to do with it. So I was like, I'm not going to be a Christian until I'm 35. I was, that was my plan. 
I wasn't going to become a Christian until I was 35. So um, this new assistant pastor came into church and I just was drawn to the way they taught. My mother would buy tapes of it. This is, this is a while ago. They would do their sermons and teachings would be on tapes and you can go buy the tape. So my mother will buy these tapes and come home and just play them. And she wasn't playing them. I, I don't know if God was telling her to play them so I could hear. Or she was just playing them for her edification. But I was listening. I caught myself peeping, like, like uh, sneaking and listening. I didn't want her to know I was listening because I didn't want her to be trying to encourage me to go to church. So I would hear certain things. And I was like, ooh, you know, I was like, wow, this is how she teaching? I never, you know, it was just really just fascinating me that she was talking this way because church was kind of boring to me it was like oh my god it's so boring but she was it was something different so um i started eventually going to her bible study slowly but surely pulling the guard down that i had erected around me when it came to church and i then eventually you know gave my life back to christ but um, I started going to, um, what is it, counsel by her. Um, I remember one time before I gave my life to Christ, she was, um, I was sitting in church and she kept staring, no, it was her Bible study. She kept staring at me and it was just something on her face that was um, disturbing to me. The way she was looking at me, it was disturbing. and. It looked like she was kind of scared. Uh, um, she asked me, was anything wrong with me? And I said, no, that I knew of. And later on, she revealed to me that um, she saw a mask on, her, on my face. It was something dark and sinister that was on my face. And it was disturbing. And um, I said, wow, this is after I gave my life to Christ and God was cleaning me out and just filling me up with him. So that's that's why she was looking the way she was looking in church because she said it was just like dark and sinister. So anyway, I started going to counsel with her. And um, I was frustrated about things because I'm thinking, you know, when I came in Christ and everything is supposed to just boom, 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 snapping the finger. God's supposed to be doing things for me. And, you know, I shouldn't have to be waiting, you know, but I was young. Didn't I mean, I was didn't know any better that, you know, God just don't just bum rush you with a lot of things you've been waiting for. Or he promise he's going to do for you because you have to get cleaned out you have to get ready to receive those blessings and I thank God now that I look back at my life today I look back I know I know as sure as I'm breathing I wasn't ready for a whole lot of things trust I wasn't and like I said later on I will reveal a little bit more about my life but not right now so anyway um she came because I was so frustrated and irritated at, about my, the way my life was going. <laughs> I was two seconds into, you know, my life, living a new life for Christ. I'm frustrated, right? So I'm thinking everything is supposed to change overnight, which some, did, some things did change. But meaning physical blessings and finances, I'm thinking everything is supposed to change overnight. She said, can I pray for you? I said, yes. I'm like, in my heart, yeah, girl. And I hope it just changed. I hope the blessings of Jesus come raining down on me as soon as you pray for me. This is what I'm thinking. But, of course, I didn't say it out loud. So she stood behind me. I'm sitting at her desk. She comes from around her desk. She puts her hand. She stands behind me. And there wasn't that much room, be room between the chair I was sitting in and her wall. So I'm sitting there. And I'm, you know, got my head bowed, just waiting for her to pray for me. She's saying a prayer. She starts saying a prayer out loud. Then she put her hands on me. And she's praying. And I'm sitting there with my eyes closed, just, you know, listening to the prayer and, and praying silently. Boom! I just heard, just sound like something slammed against the wall. And I'm like jumping, like what in the world? And every when I heard it the first time, her hands before I heard it, her hands were on my back, on my shoulder back area. But when I heard the boom, 
her hands was off of it was you know was taken off of me and I'm like oh okay well maybe you know the power I'm thinking the power of God was so strong in her Ooh, I'm saying oh this prayer I'm really gonna see some changes right so okay she started again she <clears throat> cleared her throat she started putting her hands she started praying again and then she puts her hands on my shoulder saying she's still praying then like seconds after she put her hands on my shoulder boom I heard another bomb boom like boom like like the, just imagine somebody being slammed against the wall that's exactly how it sounded and every time I heard her sl that slam her hands was taken off of me her hands was so I'm like what wow but she would never say anything I was saying I I'm turning to look but I'm not turning all the way around in my chair to look I'm just looking my like, girl what, what I'm like in my mind like what is going on like I'm expecting her to say oh the power is just flowing the power of God Holy Spirit is just flowing through me so heavy oh it's so powerful girl this is this prayer is you know this is what I'm thinking she's gonna say she never said a word it happened one more time she cleared her throat again she's praying i'm hearing her prayer so it wasn't like she wasn't praying in tongues or nothing like that i'm just hearing her prayer and then she put her hands on my back seconds later bam! i'm like the last time i was like well what is going on i'm like something not right this is what i'm thinking but i didn't say it out loud she <clears throat> cleared her throat came from behind me fixing her top and sat down in the chair she did not say one word to me it was very weird strange unusual that i'm thinking the power i knew it was her i knew she was being slammed against the wall but i didn't know why i thought it was god i thought it was it was this power coming through her for praying for me and 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 then it was just slamming her against the wall but not you know abusing her but just the god's power is so powerful it can literally make you tired really in the physical I've been filled with, I don't have felt some, some power or on, from God on me so strong that I could barely talk or lift my hands. But anyway, I, man, I got so many things to say. But anyway, she just, you know, and she would not look at my eyes. She just, you know, she said, a I can't even remember exactly what she said, but I'm looking at her like, what is going on, girl? You going to tell me what's going on? She would not look at my eyes. So I went home and I told my sister what happened and we both looking like what later on I found out what that was about <laughs> first of all the woman wasn't right God can use whoever he wants to use to get to you she was used to help pull me out of darkness thank God because I don't think I had that long to go because um one night I was just before I gave my life to Christ, I was out with a homeboy two some in the morning in LA and I was being chased. Some dudes jumped out of a hamburger stand and robbed a joint. Wow, me we was at hamburger stand about to get us something to eat. Uh, they jumped out the uh car, they was in the regal, jumped out of a regal with shotguns to rob the joint and he took off down the street i pulled i was in a um a 80 1980 some cadillac hit the hit the uh hit the gas pedal and took off man and i'm flying down the street and i saw somebody behind me with um their lights off it, was, it looked like the car that just robbed the joint and i'm oh my god i'm so scared to death because i saw the shotguns when they got the car to rob the burger stand and they was chasing me I don't know how I lost them, but I guess maybe they were just like, you know, maybe they thought I was going to the police. I don't know. This is before cell phones. So this was some time ago. But, um, yeah, I shook them. And I, the homeboy that I was with, man, I never felt the same about him. I was like, nigga, oh, excuse me. I was like, you going to leave me? You could have ran to the car, but, you know, anyway. So... Um, and prior to that happening, I kept having thought feelings like something was trying to kill me. I didn't, I couldn't explain it, but I just kept feeling it. Like I was, something was following me. 
and I knew what it was, but I wasn't I wasn't ready to turn away from sin. So, like I said, I have a lot to talk about. But um yeah. I knew that she was not praying for me. I don't know what she was trying to put on me, but God wouldn't let her. He slammed her or God had his angel sl- literally slam this woman against the wall three times. So I should have known right then and there that God put a, f- a phenomenal protection around me. And I didn't even know. <laughs> That's why the, de- the devil has tried many a times to come for me. And God let me see at that time in my life. What kind of protection he has around me. That he wouldn't let this woman that was pretending to be a God-fearing pastor put something on me. It obviously wasn't of God what she was trying to do. And she was slammed against a wall three times behind me. Okay, Um, I'm going to cut it. I might come with a second part. I know I wasn't like, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. God told me not to be concerned about what I was going to say. I said enough for you to understand that the black church has failed the black community. A lot of these black pastors, I'll say 90, 97% of them ain't right. And that's why the black community is such in such a terrible state. And I'm talking about the big time pastors on down. They ain't teaching you right and they don't care about you. And they, they are still doing what the enslaver oppressors want them to do. Just lullaby you to sleep. And tell you to wait till you get to heaven for your justice. Nah, you supposed to be fighting for your justice now. The God I serve, he ain't no coward. Jesus wasn't a coward. You better get up and stand and fight and stop letting this world do whatever this government and these these evil sectors do whatever they want to you and you don't say anything but then you'll go and you're going um try to check these um these um entertainers you go and attack beyonce and you're going to attack these other entertainers but you don't say nothing to these wicked politicians and government officials and evil schools that's a coward move to me gotta get these entertainers at the right time there's some that's going to repent and turn from their wickedness and denounce the devil and there's some there's not the ones you need to be speaking out against you don't say nothing you don't say nothing to these wicked two-faced hypocritical witch devil serving pastors and these witch filled schools and wicked corporations you'll say nothing to them but you'll stand up and you'll openly rebuke these um entertainers that's cowardice to me. And these churches ain't doing nothing but putting you to sleep and destroying you. All right, that's what I got all I have to say right now. I'll probably come up with a second part. Um, you better test the spirit by the spirit. And I'm talking about these pastors too. When I came back to Christ, I was st- Stuck on T.D. Jakes. I was like, ooh, I was just thirsty for the word of God. I just wanted to hear anything and everything that had to do with God. Until I started witnessing something about that man I felt wasn't right. And to this day, I feel the same way about T.D. Jakes. Now you take that to the bank and you cast that check because it's good. God, peace be still. God bless you guys. I love you. And I'm out.